Welcome to my channel on the best of fantasy. Today I am reviewing Summer Night. This is book four of The Dresden Files by Jim Butcher. This review will be spoiler free. So I have to say folks, this is the Dresden Files book that I have been waiting for. <laughs> and it, it just, you know, it built on the previous ones, which were sort of more episodic in nature, almost like standalones. But I got the sense with Summer Night that it's part of something bigger, that part of something more vast. And I did see the familiar patterns that were established in the first three books, these, these noir mystery books uh, and uh, the three part plot structure. But there are hints, as I said, of a bigger story as well, something that is going to connect this vast series together, I hope. So I just wanna say right off the bat, the fans of the series were right. And I'm so glad that uh, so many of you fans of the Dresden Files have been leaving comments on my previous videos. And I will say too, that they were right about the voyeuristic elements of those first three books. They have receded somewhat, but I would say even more importantly, uh, they are in a sense part of Harry's story. And I appreciated that more in this book than in the previous ones. And that is partly due to feedback from fans of the series. And there is, of course, so much more. I'm going to say more about that voyeuristic thing in a bit when I talk about Harry, but there is so much more to these books as well. And particularly, I think, in the case of Summer Night, there is the action, which is all the Dresden Files books have had great action so far, leading to some tremendous pacing. I mean, these books just read themselves almost. It's so fast. Uh, the, you could probably polish off uh, a Dresden Files book in a day if, if, if you were hooked enough. And I certainly have been with that action. It's, it's really well done. The Butcher is a master of pacing, I would say. And there's the humor. I quite enjoy the humor the vast majority of the time. And I especially like the self-deprecating nature of the humor. And that is something that I think from the very beginning is one of the reasons why I like Harry so much as a character. There's a kind of playfulness to the series, a, a goofiness that I find very relatable and fun. So that is very well done as well. And that's been the case for all the books and is certainly present in, in Summer Night as well. So I'm very happy to see that there. But ultimately these books so far, and I think can, will continue to be about Harry as a character, his development and the gradual reveal that we are getting about his past. And this has a lot to do with a lot of trauma that Harry has been through and I think this is a large reason why you have that voyeuristic element in the books as well. It has a lot to do with his past, I'm beginning to see, and the, the suffering that he has gone through and the loneliness that is a big part of his present, which is also very much tied to a lot of guilt and a lot of self-loathing. And this is where I'd like to talk about Harry for a little bit as the narrator. This is the first person narration. But I think in some ways, Harry is actually an unreliable narrator, chiefly in respect to himself. His perception of himself is, I think, um, a very grim one. It is a very dark self-perception. And this, this is what I said about self-loathing. Uh, and so there's actually a pretty, I think, emotional part of these books that can hit you. And it did for me in this book, it did for the previous books as well, actually, and which is why I've liked Harry all along as the protagonist, and, and that's one reason I've kept reading as well, is I've enjoyed his character and the evolving complexity of it. His development is, is really handled very well. But when you talk about Harry's self-loathing and the guilt and all that, I think you need to contrast it to the obvious loyalty that other characters feel for him. Yes, there's suspicion from you know, even characters who are as... Uh, beloved as, you know, Lieutenant, or, or, or sorry, Lieutenant, Lieutenant Murphy, uh, Karen Murphy. She and Harry have some great scenes in this book. And I think together they help each other to understand their trauma a bit. And so that's kind of beautiful, actually. But you also have the loyalty of characters like Billy and the Alphas. Why would they like Harry so much if he were such a terrible human being, right? 
Uh, there's also a new character, Ebenezer, whose relationship with Harry is really well done, is a bit of a, a mentor figure, um, but his loyalty to Harry tells you a lot about Harry as a character as well. So it, I think you have to look at the reactions of the other characters to Harry. And yes, of course, there are those who, uh, like Morgan, for example, who hate Harry. But Morgan is obviously coming from a very self-righteous place, right? So uh, I don't think that his view <laughs> is as persuasive as some of the others. He obviously has some, some glasses coloring his view of Harry. And there are parts of Harry's past that have a lot to do with the trauma that I think are part of the reason why Morgan feels the way he does. So, so even Morgan in some ways, I suppose, has his moments where you, you understand the character. Um, but I think it's just wonderful how Harry's character has evolved for me in, in terms of its complexity. And we get some interesting, com speaking of complexity, I mean, there's some interesting relationships in there. For example, Harry's relationship with his Godmother, Leia. I mean, that is, that is intriguing. In, in, in the past books, we've seen quite a bit of antagonism there and a lot of fear on Harry's part for his godmother, understandably so. A very powerful she and uh, a very intimidating character. Uh, but there is some also, you know, she's his godmother and there is some genuine affection there as well. I think that goes both ways. So very interesting presentation of her in here. And I'm curious to see where that goes in future books as well. And there, there are other characters introduced from Harry's past that I, I won't talk about because they're new to the series. And I think very interesting. It would be a bit too spoilery to talk about, but very interesting in terms talk about complexity in a relationship. Uh, <laughs> there is some good complexity. There is uh, you know, a great deal of uh, a mixture of affection and love and, and fear and loathing and mistrust and trust. And the trusting is a great theme in here as well. The issue of trust and who to trust and when and, and what it means to trust people. So really good stuff. I also thoroughly enjoyed the Never Never. I was looking for it as the hints we were getting in the first few books had me really curious about the Never Never. And here I, find, I found that I was finally satisfied with what I was seeing of the Never Never. And you have the queens of the, the respective summer and winter courts. You have Mab and Maeve and the winter, the mother, mother winter. And then you have Aurora and Titania and Mother Summer in, in their respective courts. Uh, so, and also the knights of each court as well. And you have interactions between the fairy realm and the human realm that are quite reminiscent, I found, in some ways of Shakespeare's fairy plays, namely A Midsummer Night's Dream and The Tempest. And what you see in Summer Night is a lot of the whimsical nature that you see in A Midsummer Night's Dream of, of the fairy and their interactions with humans and how they can uh, cast their glamour on humans and that sort of thing. But you also see the bit of the darkness that is from The Tempest in terms of that, that interaction between the worlds. So a little bit of Shakespeare and, and a couple, I think, well-placed Shakespeare allusions in there as well. Not just Titania, the name of the uh, queen of the summer court. Uh, there are also some cleverly inserted uh, Shakespeare references, I think, um, as well. So I, I quite enjoyed that. Um, and I also love how the story is still grounded in Chicago, even as we see how the series will become elevated and more entangled in vaster realms. So very much, uh, a, 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 for me, a, a great hint to where this series could go. So I'm very excited to see what Butcher does with all of that. So without question, this Summer Night has been my favorite of the Dresden Files books so far. And I will definitely be continuing with this series. And before, I have to confess, I was continuing with the series more or less because of feedback from fans of the series. And I'm glad that I put my faith in them because I am on board now and I am looking forward to the ride. So thank you very much for watching. That's it for me for now. Until next time.